Hi, everyone. Okay, so we've concluded our single interviews. We're going to be bringing the three gentlemen back on now so we can have a bit of a reunion. So let's bring them on. There we go. There are the three amigos. Welcome back, gentlemen. Uh, we wanted to bring you back here tonight as a little bit of a reunion, um, some final messages for you guys to converse a little bit, give some messages to our community and the people that are tuned in tonight. Um, so let's kick off with you, Dell, hmm. and you know, bring us your final thoughts here, what you saw tonight, any messages going forward. You know, I was just sitting here and reflecting. I mean, you know, I don't, I'm, I don't live in New Jersey. Um, and, and as Jamel put it, you know, we travel, I travel all over the country all the time, but you know, I was just reflecting. I pulled up on my phone to remind myself what the original battle of Trenton was. Um, and you know, as it's described, it's not the end of the war, right? It, it's not the final victory, but the battle of Trenton, you know, the moment George Washington surprised the troops and comes across the river what they all describe it as was was it reinvigorated a belief that we could win it reinvigorated an enlistment of troops for people to to join and and become a part of this revolution to stand for something and it really and you know it's it, it's so close in in date but just it's really truly the best representation it truly was the battle of trenton all over again what this battle did for this movement um that had been demoralized, had been at it for a very long time. And really, as you keep saying, a part of this marathon, it, it brought new energy. And the, the, the new voices, Jamel Holly and, 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 and Senator Michael Testa, and you guys, what, you know, it, it just was a shift. No longer, and, and you were so right, Michael, when you sort of called me out on don't paint us all with this broad brush. It was very important. It was a really good message to me to remember. And we all have to remember this that we cannot generalize you know, who we're talking to. We don't know who we're talking to. We don't know who's on our side. We cannot make generalizations or assumptions. We have to recognize that inside every person um, is an ability to wake up, to understand if we find the right talking point, we find what it is they really care about. Um, I think I wanna say, because you know, when I came to this movement, um, I was brand new just back in uh, 2016 when our film release Vaxxed. And, you know, there was skepticism on, am I for real? Is he going to stick around? Is he just, you know, a flash in the pan? And and I had all this energy and, and a lot of people walked up to me and said, you know, Dell, this is a marathon. It's not, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. But I would be careful about saying that now. And I guess it depends on our definition of a marathon. But I will say this, we are running out of time. This whole thing has been a very long marathon, probably a century long when we talk about the vaccine conversation. Uh, when we look at the oppression of humanity and the desire to control us, authoritarian governments, communism, all these things that we fought off for so long that have gone back to drawing boards and designed a way to take over media to affect our education system so that we would be too complacent to stand for ourselves. All of that is the marathon. But for everyone out there, I don't think it's time to stop saying that because there's people say, oh, good. So then I have some time to decide when I want to jump in this. And the truth is, is we don't have any more time. This, this is not going to be a marathon for much longer. The conversations that are happening in this country, what we just happened with COVID is so, you know, horrifying that there was an alignment by a very, like truly a conspiracy of a very small group of corrupted scientists that were able to influence health departments through WHO and virtually every government in our world just turned on its own people. We've never seen any moment like this in history. Our world wars up until this point have been contained inside one, you know, a country against a country, a few countries, maybe a continent against another continent. This was a war that the entire world, the politicians of the world brought this war upon the citizens of the world. Um, this is coming to a close. And I've said it. This is not a fight that we will sit and say, oh, I'm, you know, I'm going to do the best I can and leave it to my children, leave it, leave it to my grandchildren. We are literally going to see the end of this battle, most of us in our lifetime. And I truly believe probably within the next five years, 
we'll have a really good sense whether or not we will be allowed sovereignty of our own bodies to be able to travel freely on this earth without being tracked everywhere we go, essentially avoiding a permanent house arrest of some form of another. World Economic Forum, Bill Gates Foundation, Gavi, WHO, UNICEF, all of these things and tons and tons of money are investing in the idea of tracking us in every move that we're making. And, and I think what is so brilliant about this conversation and why I'm so passionate about it, as a journalist, um, as a freedom fighter, and what I say, I'll be speaking in Narcopoco, where there'll be people talking about banking and talking about all the other issues, and they're out there, AI, all of it, all of it is behind the tip of the spear, which I believe is this vaccine conversation. This is literally the most important conversation that is happening all around the world. If we win this, we can win the whole thing. If we do not, we are in real trouble. And I will say this too, when people are saying, well, Dell, what about you know organic food? Or why aren't you talking more about 5G or these things? I'll tell you why. Because I think of this as, you know, if you are being imprisoned, if you've been held captive or taken prisoner, if you're trying to cut through that, you've got a toothbrush and you're going to try to dig your way out of that cell, that three feet of concrete, you don't hit a little bit here and hit a little bit here and hit a little bit here and hit a little bit here. You pick the one spot that we can all agree could bring this whole thing down and everybody drills that same spot. That's what this conversation is. This literally holds what we believe our government has the power to do. It holds our belief in government, our belief in health systems, who gets to control us. If we can make aware, uh, you know, create an awareness for all the people of what is wrong with this vaccine program and how many lies have been around it and how it has been used against us, we will be able to change and get back to the dream of our founding fathers of what this government is supposed to be, as Michael Tess and his grandfather are so clearly laying out in the history of African Americans, what Jamel Hawley stands for on so many different levels. This conversation holds it all. It holds the corruption of government. It holds the, the manipulation of science. It holds the, the control over, you know, um, um, media. So, I would just say this, we have got to be more vigilant than ever. And, and maybe it's just my own personal thing. I can't tell you how many things I just did today. I can't tell you how hard I'm trying to raise money to fight, to stop the attack on religious exemptions. I believe we're gonna bring devastating blows that we think will have national implications this year. But I am filled with a passion because I am fighting for my kids. I don't know how long I get to be here. I don't know how long any of this is gonna truly be. I don't know how this ends. People will say, Dell, how does this end? What is your vision in the end? You know, that's for God to decide. That is what God gets to decide. All I get to decide is, I, am I going to be a warrior for God's mission, for truth, for the, the humanity and the people that are, you know, created in the image and likeness of God. This idea that my government injects me with products, puts masks on my children to make them afraid to breathe God's air, that they aren't, uh, they aren't safe, that we aren't protected. The churches that have been enrolled to be, make us afraid of a virus as though God has no power over those things. This truly is the demise of what we stand for. It's the demise of the power of every religion that once exists, the God that we all share. This is man trying to take control over the things it has no control over. And as I've said before, ultimately COVID and this entire pandemic has been a white knuckle, desperate grasp by the Neanderthals of medicine trying to hold on to relevance. There is a beauty and a power to what we can do, the healing tools that are available to us now and the rights that we should stand for. Um, this is the moment. And Instead, all I would say is this, you know, when we get afraid, this is what Trent was so great. But it wasn't just moms. It was fathers and mothers. I've never we've never in every race, culture and creed in, in Los Angeles. They said the same thing where that we've never seen this diverse an audience all together in one giant space like this. Mm -hmm. But this right. is the moment. This is the moment in which it's not an issue. Home. It's not an issue that we care about. It is the issue Jeez. that it is the issue. And like you said, I will echo um, if you don't have bodily autonomy and if you don't have the right to protect your children and decide what 
is done with your body and your children's bodies, you have nothing else. There is not even a close second uh, to us and people in our mm. community. This is the issue. This is what we fight for. And the stake in the game is our children. And um, that is what we are on this earth to do is to protect them. And it started, <laughs> and we will continue to do that uh, with and, and with the help and support of voices like yours. Um, we're going to carry on this conversation. Thoughts, Assemblyman, Senator. Uh, I'll, I'll certainly chime in. You know, Dell, that was a great recitation of what's been happening and what yeah. people, <laughs> it what took people me need to do to be ever vigilant. I mean, I think we wow. saw, you know, who would have known, like, we're here celebrating this three year anniversary. And, and you know, and, and, and I'd be remiss if I didn't shout out all the people that I see on the right side of my screen who, are making comments in the chat. I'm, I'm unable to comment, I guess, because I'm a participant. I, I wanted to say hello to so many of you because I recognize so many of your names. Many of you are my Facebook friends and many of you I recognize from being in those crowds in December and in January of 19 and 2020 and beyond. Um, but something that we saw, you know, we would have never known was coming in January of 2020 was COVID. And, it, and to what we saw, which was quite scary to me as an attorney, I really love definitions. And we saw the definition of vaccine change during the COVID era. You know, I'm a pretty basic individual and a vaccine is supposed to do two things. It's supposed to one, prevent you from contracting a disease and two, prevent you from spreading a disease. We found out that the vaccine the vaccine for COVID doesn't do either of those things. And yet we were supposed to believe that this is something that is effective. And we saw, and this is the, this is the issue that I have, you know, whatever happened to the party of my body, my choice. Now all of a sudden it's something that's being forced upon us. And I, I have to say that there, I wish there were more Jamel Hollies on the other side of the aisle because I didn't see that in the state of New Jersey, nor did I see it much nationwide. And unfortunately, it did cut along par party lines, and it's not something that should be partisan. I agree with you 100 percent, Dell. This is this is a human issue. This is a basic issue of liberty. And then especially so, you know, first we're told it's 99 percent effective. Then it's 97 percent effective. Then it's 94 percent effective. And then we still don't really know. So the point I'm trying to make is that true science is ever evolving. And that we have to, there is no such thing as concrete science until it's proven, like gravity. We know gravity is is there, right? We know, we know that it exists. But this was rapidly evolving over time. And if you challenged it at all, and nobody knows when you challenge the big party what happens to them more than, than Jamel Holly. Nobody knows what happens when you, when you get punished. But when you challenge what they were trying to shove down our throats as quote unquote science, Dr. Fauci originally says you don't need a mask, then you need one mask, then you need two masks. Then he's not so sure whether you need two masks and you need one mask. I mean, remember how ridiculous it was when you saw people with like at the supermarket with two masks on and then that that big visor. I mean, I, I mean, I saw that all over the place and it was it was laughable. And yet so many people were duped. And it was this conglomerate between the government, which was Dr. Anthony Fauci. And, you know, he considered himself the government and he considered himself the science. And he said those things publicly. And no one was really holding him accountable in mainstream media, which disturbed me. And yet in New Jersey, one third of all of our small businesses shut down forever as a result of these draconian measures. And I have to tell you, I remember being on the phone with a constituent who was crying, saying, I'm a fourth generation person in this business and I am going to lose my business. I am going to be the embarrassment of my family because the government has now not allowed me to participate in my business. And, you know, again, I, I'm a firm believer in the Constitution. I know Jamel is. We took the same oath when we took the oath of office. And something that really I'm very passionate about, here it was, your First Amendment right to attend your church was not only was it inhibited, it was prevented. You weren't allowed to go to church, but you were allowed to go to your liquor store or to a marijuana dispensary. I, re I remember I held a press conference in May of 2020 
at Coho Brewing. I'm going to give a shout out to Karen Buckingham, a female owned brewery right in, in Cape May County, Middle Township. You were only allowed to get beer via takeout. Now, for a brewery, that's really hard to do. Right across the street, while I was hosting my press conference with Assemblyman Antoine McClellan and Assemblyman Eric Simonson, across the street is a Home Depot. There were over 200 cars at the Home Depot. Mm -hmm. So this had nothing to do with science. If, if we were going to really exercise scientific method, we were literally able to show across the street the science was not the same. So one of, one of the biggest messages that we tried to relay us here in this room and the people that showed up to Trenton is that eventually this issue where your rights are infringed upon will land on your doorstep. So stop it now before it does. We said we we said to many people, you, we may you may not realize that we are fighting for you, but we are. And so many people woke up during the COVID pandemic and said, we now realize you were fighting for us because the issue finally landed on their doorstep, whether it was a I agree, nurse. I agree with that. Yeah, I agree with that, Rula. I think right. what COVID did was really um, woke a, a lot of folks um, up. And, you know, it's been very difficult for me, right? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm an African-American, um, uh, African-Americans, you know, uh, in the Democratic Party and per, and per se, you know, go along with the CNNs, uh, they go along with the mainstream media that's really just focused on a lot of hype, right? But what COVID did and what I see, and Dell, to your credit, because you you, you were very consistent uh, with the high wire and a, a lot, of, there's been a lot of diversity and a lot of audience movement from the African-American community over to, to, to the high wire because you speak truth to power. And so it was really difficult for me as a young African-American Democrat, um, not towing the line, like I'm, like I was supposed to be. Um, and coming out of that was a very difficult transition for me. Um, but I knew that it was the right thing to do because I knew what was eventually going to be coming and it did. And so for me, I mean, it's, I stood on the right side of history. I didn't know that, you know, folks would say, no, keep going, Jamel, keep going. You're on the right side of history, you're on the right side of history. And now it, they were right. We were on the right right side of, side, side of history. But I got to be honest with you, this was a very, very difficult transition for me, um, being a young African-American in, in the Democratic Party. Um, I still have remnants from, from it. Um, but that's neither here or there. But for me, it was the right thing to do. But Rule, I think you really brought up an interesting point of what COVID did. Right. There were a lot of different arguments from both sides, but what it really did was woke up a lot of people. It really, really did. It really did. It really, it, it it's did. amazing too, Jamel, that really still, because there's such a, the, the, the Democrat party still relies on the African-American community, but that is still the least vaccinated when it comes to the COVID vaccine community in this country. Uh, this scared the hell out of them. This looked so much like Tuskegee. And frankly, that's what it was. It's a worldwide Tuskegee experiment where mm -hmm. we were denied products and drugs, you know, and, and even vitamins, but certainly hydroxychloroquine, and ivermectin that could have saved lives and instead let people die in hospitals and denied them that. I mean, it recurred only this time. It, it was for every race and, and created in the world, but, What's so interesting, and I think there's a rebuilding that we will see over in, in the immediate future of the Democratic Party and, you know, um, and moving towards back to liberty, right? I mean, right. being a liberal meant you believed in liberty. I think that they've really, really lost their way. Uh, and I, I hope we see you uh, back in the politics of this. But I think especially now uh, you are such a powerful and important voice. And I think you need to save that party. It is a disaster what is happening. Democrats shouldn't be authoritarians. And I think it'd be very easy to point that out now that that is not what it's supposed to be. So I Thank think you. looking at this video here and every, you know, all of our guest speakers here tonight, each one of you are unique and brought something different to the table in this battle. And I think that is uh, if we talk about New Jersey, uh, organically, so many different people came together three years ago. And I think uh, that was the magic that occurred. It was organic. 
people from different walks of life, all fighting for a collective mission. And, you know, we can't thank you three enough for being there then and continuing to be there today. Um, like you said, Dell, if it's, you can't run forever. If, if people, if we refer to it as a marathon, eventually even the best of the marathon runners, uh, you know, die out right so we need to keep fighting we need to stay vigilant and and you know the 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 activities that unfold today are important because they will determine our future and you know compliance is a word right um you know we can't just simply comply um you know with covid i think it was a big test to see the level of compliance that these uh governments can achieve with its people um so you know, you have been with us for uh, quite a while now tonight. We appreciate your time, your messages, uh, your passion, and your continued support. Thank you so much. Uh, we we are grateful for you all. No, thank you for the opportunity. It was good to see my brothers uh, in the medical freedom movement. We often see each other just in passing, but it was good to just take some moments out tonight to not only highlight the anniversary, but to thank you all, your the women from njp pack um for all that you're doing dell it's always a pleasure i guess i'll see you in florida at some point yeah. uh the next few weeks yeah uh but it, it was a pleasure this was a very momentous occasion for all of us ladies um to get the brothers uh on, on a zoom and we're just very grateful for all you continue to do thank you guys so much thank, thank you. you thank you for having us it was really wonderful to reminisce about what happened three years ago and to see where this is you know where this movement is going and, and into the future and you know who could have known that we were going to be facing two months after this right COVID. well let's yeah. hope we can make it to a four-year five-year ten-year anniversary right let's get there thank you for making this all right. goal happen and i just want to say these are the celebrations we need to have everybody stay focused on the wins stay focused on the positive let's not focus on those that we've lost or those that complied or those that stood you know, and, and didn't stand for freedom. Look how many have, look how many stood in Trenton. That was the beginning. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Stay focused on our power on our, and as individuals and as a group. And I'll see you guys on the other side of this finish line. We're going to win this. We Thanks, are. Thanks so much, guys. Right. Have a great night. We'll be right back. <laughs>